What's up everyone, Nanman here, and we're going to be talking about the best sideboard cards in Modern. So normally we spend our time talking about specific decks and highlighting kind of the ins and outs, what the cards do, what are the synergies in them, how you might start playing them, what to look out for, you know, that kind of specific stuff. This time we're going to highlight the sideboard. So normally when we go through our normal Modern Meta Breakdown videos, we kind of go through our stuff and then we skim over the sideboard because it's just like, hey, we've already talked through stuff. Uh, you know, sideboarding is hard, right? We, we understand that. So for this one, we're specifically talking about uh, sideboard cards that you are going to be seeing at least from the best decks in Modern. So when we're thinking about the, you know, top of the top best decks in Modern, we know that it is that uh, Murktide Reagent deck, the Crashing Footfalls, the four color control or blink style. And then if we're thinking below that, uh, close to it would be like Hammer Time and Yawgmoth, right? There are other decks uh, that exist in Modern, right? Amulet, Titan, Burn, Jun, Death Shadow, other sort of decks that have been running around blue-white control stuff. But I would say, at least in my top five list, I'd say is along that. Your top five might be a little bit different, but we can all agree that Murktide, Crashing, and the four color is the top three list. Uh, so these cards that we're going to highlight are cards uh, by each color. So you guys can look down below. There are timestamps to help you. Here's the white cards. Here's the blue cards, black, green, whatever. So you could be able to, uh, you know, pick the ones that are going to be based on your decks. Now, modern in 2022 is all dependent, especially in the sideboard, about free cards. There are specific free cards that we're going to be talking about. Some of those are our force cards. Force of Negation, Force of Vigor, and then we've got our new Evoke cards, right? Endurance, Fury, Solitude, those sort of things. So we count them as free cards. There is a cost to it. Uh, you have to usually exile a specific colored card, but for the most part, they're free. So those are the best cards in Modern, and if you can run those, you should, right? There's been a whole thing, like things like Ataxian Probes and stuff like that have been ban because free cards that give it card advantage not so great but these ones do give you uh an advantage in the game but we're not getting into whether or not they're they're too strong or not it's just the meta and the way that modern is played now is different than it was when you know we've had gataxian pro ban now the important part of understanding sideboarding is to understand what your deck is trying to do like once you've mastered what your deck is trying to do, you should start to notice a trend, uh, usually a theme when you're playing against specific decks. So that's going to be very important. Like, oh, what is my opponent's deck trying to do after game one? Are they going to be going for, uh, you know, more protection? Are they going to go for more disruption? But before you worry about that, you need to understand how your deck is going to function. Do you need more protection in your matchup? Do you need more disruption in your matchup based to help your deck run as effectively as possible. So we've got our Murktide Reagent deck. Uh, it looks to cast a lot of low casted spells, so it can be able to utilize things like its Dragon Rage Channeler to surveil ability. The goal is to fill up its graveyard, then be able to cast a powerful Murktide. Um, you know, based on how game one went, you might be able to pick either protection or disruption. Sometimes you need both. So if you're playing against a Crashing Footfall deck, you might need a different strategy, right? You might be having more control to help against their Cascade Crashing Footfalls, right? So you might be saying, well, if I'm running Murktide, I might want Flusterstorm um, because it works really well in this case because Flusterstorm uh, is going to be a storm effect. So if my opponent on turn three casts a Shardless Agent They've cascaded into Crashing Footfalls. I respond with a Flusterstorm, which would be that third spell played this turn, right? Shardless Agent, our, our Crashing Footfalls, and now Flusterstorm, Storm Count 3. Uh, so I'm going to be targeting all of those at Crashing Footfalls. Um, you know, you could adjust it accordingly and, and change it, especially if they maybe have more mana, maybe they are cast in a Mystical Dispute, who knows? They've got Force of Negation, things like that. But, you, you know, Flusher Storm is very nice for being able to just kind of send, oh, counter this unless you pay one. Counter this unless you pay one, right? Just annoying stuff. Um, you know, 
if you're playing the Murktide deck and you're going to be playing against Crashing Footfalls, ignore all of your Blood Moon effects because the Crashing Footfalls deck runs Blood Moon in mainboard sometimes. So it's like, oh, it's a it's a three color deck. You know, disrupting them, giving them mountains is going to hurt them. It will not. And don't think about that if you're running <laughs> against that or thinking about it or just kind of learning about these matchups. So um, that's the part of, of sideboarding that's important is understanding what my deck is trying to do and how can I progress that game plan. And then you worry about what your opponent's trying to do. All right. So uh, we kind of did those hypothetical situations there. Now, it is going to be very dependent. Like if there's a specific deck and you go, how do I sideboard against this deck? Let me know in the comments, and I can be able to help you through. We can talk through, oh, well, this is what they're trying to do, so you're going to need more protection against that. You're going to need more disruption against that, and we're going to paint it in these broader categories to help you kind of grasp that, right? And that's the best way to think about that post-sideboard games. More removal, that's kind of that disruption aspect. I'm removing their stuff, disrupting their game plan, okay? I'm protecting myself through these, right? A veil of summer, right? Counter magic. Counter magic kind of is a mix of both, but you, you get the idea. So let's kind of jump in and we'll break down our top cards, uh, at least by color real quick. And you guys let me know what you guys think about uh, each of the cards that we're going to be discussing. So we're going to break it down, start by each color. First color, of course, we're going to Wooburg order. So white. Um, so white's main game plan that we see it uh, does a very good job of disrupting parts of the game by removing annoying cards. When it comes to the top cards that you expect to see, we've got uh, March of the Other World Light. Right? You're going to be pitching cards, exiling X converted mana costs. Just great, great protection. Uh, Prismatic Ending, very, very similar. A lot of times Prismatic Ending is run main board, but sometimes you're going to be seeing it in the sideboard, so it is worth noting uh, in that regard. And then, of course, there's Rest in Peace, right? G completely exiling graveyards and preventing cards from going into graveyards because they get exiled instead. So we're looking in these. This should give you an idea of what to expect with sideboarding. If your game plan relies on keeping stuff in the graveyard, you're going to have a hard time keeping it in the graveyard if you're battling against a white player, um, or player that has white in their deck or access to these specific colors. Now, continuing along with some of our best cyborg cards, again, we're thinking about protection, we're thinking about disruptions. So, blue usually does their protection and disruption through control magic. So, uh, we're seeing some of the common older stuff like Mystical Dispute, then we've got some more powerful stuff that's in here, Flusterstorm, Aether Gust, Counterspell, Spell Pierce, right? Here's all this counter magic. We've also got that disruption added in there through cards like Vendelian Click and Dress Down. Moving on into our black cards. Uh, two most played black cyborg cards are Thoughtseize and Leyline of the Void. So that's a both disruption plan. Uh, we also are starting to see um, Yogmoth's decks running things like uh, um, Necromentia. Um, from what is that 20 core 2021 I guess was when it was printed uh, so this one's a little bit different and we don't see it as often so I'm gonna read this out where normally I've just been skipping over it but uh, Necromentia choose a card name other than a basic land card name search target opponent's graveyard hand and library for any of those named cards and exile them if you are getting rid of cards uh, from their hand uh, you are going to create two two black zombies for your opponent but really it's like one of the best uh disruption oriented cards out there it's super cheap too uh does cost three mana there's no way to kind of reduce its cost but it's like 65 cents for the card uh other ones are collective brutality and fatal push are also showing up a decent amount in decks uh, that care more about removal or care more about fueling their graveyards like the esper reanimation deck when it comes to our red cards, uh, you know, red is all on all in on this disruption plan. They're playing cards like Blood Moon or Magus of the Moon to make all of our lands mountains. And then their hate cards tend to be geared towards destroying artifacts, things like a braid or smash to smithereens. 
uh, when it comes to green, you know, our two most popular free cards, Endurance and Force of Vigor, are there. Yeah. You'll see cards like Veil of Summer for a little bit more protection as well. So be aware if you're running blue or black, you know, they will always be bringing in Veil of Summer against you. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed at least our breakdown of here's the five colors, here's the most popular stuff. We were putting those images up on the screen so you guys could be able to see them. We weren't reading them as much uh, this time like we normally spend a little bit more time for our audio listeners, uh, but this time we just kind of visual more. So apologize all you audio listeners out there. Uh, but, you know, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you are running, what you're trying to sideboard. Are there matches that you go, oh, I know right away I always bring in these cards I have a harder time against this matchup you know I'd love to get that discussion going but thanks for tuning in and watching guys and I'll see you guys next game thanks for tuning in and watching everybody hope you guys enjoyed the video if you like the content I just wanted to let you know about some of the other areas that you can check out some of the work that I do so I've got magic content that's up on youtube.com slash modern magic mondays and that is of course we've got two videos that come out a month one is related to the modern meta modern meta breakdown stuff and then we've got commander gameplay footage uh, we might start adjusting our kind of coverage and gameplay stuff uh, as we get closer to the summer but as of right now we're doing two videos a month for our gaming channel youtube.com slash nanman we do have our monthly uh, look back at StarCraft 2 content. So we've been going through that. We've also been doing some different gameplay stuff, going back through different uh, games we've been playing, like, of course, StarCraft uh, campaign stuff, Sea of Thieves, and then we're starting to get into some, um, you know, Minecraft, Pokemon, basically just kind of variety games. But uh, that stuff might start shifting a little bit uh, as extra content is going to be released on that channel coming this summer when the streams return. Uh, but the main stuff that you can find over there, of course, is all of that a look back at StarCraft 2 or a history of StarCraft. Now, there is other ways that you guys can be able to show your support if you like it. The easiest way is subscribing, uh, hitting those like buttons, letting people know about the video, you know, tweeting about it, all that kind of fun stuff. But if you're feeling like you have money to spare and you want to throw some money to help improve the projects that I work on, you can be able to do that over on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash therealnanman. And you can see all the different rewards and tier stuff that we've got uh, in place to kind of help, help people out that help us. Uh, but I hope you guys have enjoyed all the content that I've been producing, and I'll see you guys next game.